Hello everyone and welcome to the 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. session of the 2021 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are pleased to introduce the session Digital Citizenship for Cyborgs and Avatars. Our speakers are Sheila Weber, aka Sheila Yoshikawa, and Valerie Hill, aka The Librarian Greg. Sheila is a faculty member in the Information School, University of Sheffield, United Kingdom, and an honorary fellow of the United Kingdom's Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professionals. Her core teaching and research areas are information literacy, literacy and information behavior. She has maintained the information literacy web blog since 2005. Valerie Hill, director of the Community Virtual Library, is a library and information science educator with a research focus on the intersection of information literacy and global digital participatory culture. She has taught at all age levels, served as a school librarian, and is a national writing project trainer. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Citizenship for Cyborgs and Avatars. Sheila and I are both information science researchers and we're researching how virtual environments enhance literacy and how changes in digital culture are impacting literacy. All of us here today are represented as avatars. And yet, we're all seated, seating in the physical world. We're seated at computers and we're surrounded with our digital devices. Many of you have several computers up at the same time, juggling multimedia tools. I recently read that most teenagers sleep with their phone beside them, their digital device, which makes me feel that our digital devices have become appendages to our bodies. So, hello out there, all you cyborgs. Amber Case argues that we have all become cyborgs with our lives entangled 24 seven with technology. In her work on cyborg anthropology, Amber Case calls herself a cyborg anthropologist and you can find her work at cyborganthropology.com. Her TED talk that I heard 10 years ago, or now 11 years ago, back in 2010, um, it sparked a lot of discussion on uh, cyborgs and how we're all cyborgs. Certainly, we juggle numerous forms of literacy every day, all day long, through apps and tablets and laptops and through our smartphones, um, particularly our smartphones are in our pocket. I like to say our library is in our pocket. And we do this throughout the day, every day. I was in a drugstore recently and the clerk at the counter said, I'm sorry, but you can't shop here today because our computer is down. I was amazed at that statement because it illustrates our dependency on the grid. Yes, we cannot function without our technology. Without it, we couldn't access much of the information that we take in and the information that we produce. Most of our content now is born digital. Whether or not one has an avatar, we all need digital citizenship. Now this argument about all of us being cyborgs, it's, it's the argument that we place before you today just to get you thinking, because there's a need to think critically about the future of communication and certainly about the future of literacy for human beings who want to remain human. All of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the term digital citizenship. You hear about it a lot. And you're familiar with all of the issues that we face today, such as cybersecurity and privacy. When I was an elementary school librarian, 
I earned a digital citizenship certification for my school. And it's through an organization called commonsensemedia.org. You may have heard of it. Great organization that can help young people and teachers and parents learn about what it means to be a good digital citizen. But it's not only young people and children that need to learn this. Everyone needs to become aware of the problems that we're facing in our culture and in our future. So I'll put that site here in the text chat, commonsensemedia.org. If you know someone who may want to work with children, parents, educators. Whether we are walking around in the beauty of our physical world, enjoying sunshine, or we're teleporting through the metaverse as an avatar, or we're juggling a plethora of applications on our many devices as a cyborg. We all need digital citizenship. So Sheila and I are here to tell you a bit more about why it's essential, why it, there's an essential need for digital citizenship. So Sheila, I'll turn the mic over to you. Thank you, Val. So I'm going to be talking about why information literacy or media information literacy is essential um, as a foundation to thinking about the essential nature of digital citizenship. Library and information professionals and educators have known for some time that information literacy is, as a UNESCO declaration put it in 2003, part of the basic human right of lifelong learning. In recent years, the use of misinformation and disinformation as political tools aiming to undermine and disrupt democracy and the disinformation circulating about the COVID virus have brought the need for media and information literacy to the attention of those with more power uh, to influence and change that I have or Val have, unfortunately, although we, we're doing our best. And I wanted to draw attention to this quotation from a very interesting panel um, that was broadcast this week from the Internet Governance Forum, this international forum, with um, various stakeholders from different parts of the world and representing different um, sectors. And this is the quotation from Viera Jurvavo, uh, Vice President and Commissioner at the European Commission, who noted that we see in the pandemic more than before how media literacy is important, that this is a matter of health, of life or death, to ha either have trustworthy information or to be overloaded with disinformation. And so that's this important message about media and information literacy being vital for everyone is reading, reaching a new constituency of more powerful people who could perhaps can make sure that this is brought into education and so forth more thoroughly. And in November this year, the UNESCO General Council endorsed the Winter uh, Plus 30 Declaration on Information as a Public Good, which states that press freedom, ind independence and pluralism remain major goals to guarantee information as a public good that serves as a shared resource for the whole of humanity. To these goals, we now add those of media viability, transparency of digital platforms, which is certainly an aspiration rather than a reality at the moment, and citizens empowered with media and information literacy. Citizens empowered with media and information literacy. And it's important, I think, that these international bodies are proclaiming this importance. So increasingly, there's an awareness that people need to engage ethically and critically with information in all aspects of their lives, physical and digital, lifelong. And so I'm going to hand back to Val to explore a concept that encompasses these ideas, meta-literacy. Thank you, Sheila. There's a new term that's come into use that fits how literacy has changed. As we all upload our user-generated content and we download online content all the time, and this term is meta-literacy. We're meta-literate when we learn to evaluate content, use information ethically, and we strive to be digital citizens through an authentic online persona. Social media requires meta-literacy, or we will become self-absorbed infovores. You can see on this slide that the meta-literate person or learner has many roles. Each of us can be a participant, a communicator, a translator, an author, teacher, collaborator, producer, publisher, or researcher. Each of us has a voice, everyone has a voice, and numerous platforms in which to share and speak. Yet each of us has the personal responsibility to think critically before we make intake 
or share information. The future depends upon our personal responsibility, each of us in digital culture. It's where we live. Definitions of the vocabulary that we use is evolving. The metaverse, for example, alongside the metaverse, which has tons of definitions, and deciding about the meaning of these words, that is literacy. VR, XR, AR, mixed realities, all of these have evolving definitions that impact literacy and education. Sheila will share more about the future. Thanks again, Val. Um, and so I think it's exciting to consider how we can move this agenda forward in virtual worlds. Um, so what can we as educators in virtual worlds do to progress things? So firstly, we can reflect on and develop our own meta literacy as individual citizens and as teachers, collaborators, producers or researchers. So I think learning how to be information literate Meta literate is a lifelong task. It's a never ending task, and I think it's uh, valuable and enjoyable that this is a never ending task. And educators need to develop lifelong to be able to ena enable others meta literacy, because obviously, if we're not open to new developments and learning ourselves, we're not going to be able to educate others. Secondly, developing the meta literacy of learners that we engage with. And this is not just explicitly teaching about meta literacy, um, which is something that I might do as someone in the information science field, but thinking um, how these attitudes and these understandings can be incorporated into other things that we teach. And I'm just suggesting here that in doing that, as well as thinking about the roles that Val has outlined, there are three themes identified in the recently published UNESCO Media and Information Liter Literacy Curriculum, which is a a really fat volume that's free to download that was published um, very recently and which kind of outlines a curriculum for media and information literacy and they identify that the three themes are knowledge and understanding of information media and digital communications for sustainable development peace and democratic discourses and social participation i feel that these messages um certainly appeal as far as i can see to the people i interact with in virtual worlds um, who I think would espouse these values and these, these goals. Evaluation of content and the institutions that produce that content and production and use of content and how one can be meta-literate in producing and using content. And finally, I think we shouldn't be shy of identifying our own experience and understanding of how these ideas apply and how they can be taught in a digital environment. Mm. Many of you here have years and years of experience and insight into what it means to be meta literate in virtual reality, in virtual worlds. And I think these insights can be expressed boldly to help those who are still coming to terms with the idea that a virtual world is part of real life. Because I don't know about you, but I still hear people distinguishing between real life and digital life, whereas I think we here realise that it's all part of life. And um, now I'll hand back to you again, Val, to finish. And also I'll paste the um, references we've been making into the text chat in a moment. Yes, and you can see the references that we've been talking about here on the, the slides right now. And um, we're talking a lot about all the different realities um, that are all evolving whether they're physical, they're virtual, or they're somewhere in between with augmented. And as they all evolve these different uh, definitions of them, we believe that sitting here in a virtual world is virtual reality. It's simply without a headset. There's so much more we could say about information literacy. And you can find us uh, on this contact information here. Meta literacy and digital citizenship for cyborgs and avatars is just one way of looking at the fact that we are who we are in any of these spaces, physical, virtual, or augmented. Um, you can contact us in Second Life as a main home base. We both work there quite often, but you can also find us in other uh, virtual worlds. I'm the director, as um, I was introduced, of the Community Virtual Library in Second Life, but we also have a branch in Kitely, and we're exploring a lot of VR headset worlds. Sheila leads the weekly Virtual Worlds Education Roundtable, which meets 
on Thursdays at noon Second Life or Pacific Time. Both of us are involved in the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium, which help, helps to connect and collaborate with educators, learners, anyone interested in virtual worlds around the globe. VWEC is um, hosted on the Community Virtual Library website at communityvirtuallibrary.org. Sheila and I are passionate about the need for digital citizenship, and we firmly believe that cyborgs and avatars must remain human. <laughs> so thank you all. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and I believe we have time for a few questions. Feel free to type a question in the local chat if you'd like to. I see Beth's pasting in the um, calendar of events for both the Virtual Worlds Education Roundtable, the Community Virtual Library, and the Virtual Worlds Education Consortium meets quarterly in Second Life with the next meeting coming up on January 5th. Uh, the cyborg thing, there's a huge argument, argument out there about what a cyborg is. Most people think robots, and um, but I think what Amber Case is saying here to get us thinking is that if, if we must have our digital device right beside us at all times, that is like an appendage, that is a dependency, which could be, uh, could align with the uh, the definition of what a cyborg is, which is a human being that is totally dependent on something for survival that is um, digital or, you know, that is uh, not organic. <laughs> and so she goes, uh, most of uh, Amber Case goes by Case Organic online as her name on Twitter and everywhere, Case Organic, to remain organic <laughs> rather than digital. Um, I see there's a question about meetings moving <clears throat> from or being augmented, so one does not have to have a Second Life account. So at the moment, um, for the Virtual Worlds Education Roundtable, we are keeping it just in Second Life, but certainly um, recently we've had uh, one or two attendees who've been talking about ways of bridging through to other channels, like, for example, Discord. Um, I suppose one thing is that actually meeting in the same I think of it as a physical space, <laughs> has um, a certain bond. Um, and so I think myself, I might see having, having keeping a focus in different venues, but certainly Second Life isn't the only one, as we, here we are here, um, enjoying a different venue. And so I think learning how to make the best out of the different venues and the different digital spaces so just looking at the other text. Um. I think also the argument about using the term cyborgs just mm. gets us talking about all of these things mm. because people have a lot of uh, vague ideas of about um, science fiction and reality and a lot of those things merge. You know? And so we, it, that's part of meta literacy is to try to think critically about what these things mean and what mm. the definitions mean. So I think that's why we chose the term. Mm. Yes, I mean, the, also people seem to, the, the fact that people are making this kind of black and white distinction, it's a cyborg or it, or it's a real kind of soft, woolly human being, um, or indeed a kitty or a, a hippo, that um, thinking about one's lives now being blended between the digital and the physical, and 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 that is how life is now. Um, I, I I think that's an important thing. A lot of people still find difficult to take on board. Yes, and that's why we need the term meta literacy because literacy has drastically changed because of online culture, and there's no going back. So we've got to raise these conversations. So I think 
that might be we're getting prompts that that might be our time is up. <laughs> Should we be handing back now? Yes, I, I'm waiting for someone to tell us that we don't yes. run out of time, but thank you all for being here. And, yes, and I hope our paths will cross across the metaverse. Yes, indeed. Uh, I echo uh, Val's, Val's greetings and, um, and hopes for the future. I see in the text chat that our moderator crashed. This is such a great example of uh, literacy in, in digital culture, juggling different things. There's no, there's no mastery. You don't go up the hierarchy and finally master it. You just keep juggling. That's okay. I can jump in. Um, but uh, you know, thank you, thank you, Val and Sheila, for this. And I think many of us are, you know, think about this like this interconnections between. Um, virtual and 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 our physical and and uh, I certainly agree with you, Sheila, that it's all real. Um, <laughs> so, with um, with that, we should wrap it up. Um, and uh, in lieu of the moderator, thank you both, and uh, and uh, we'll kind of go on to the next presentation, which will be starting in about nine minutes. So stick around for that. And again, you can always go to the schedule. The Commons hat, uh, and um, and you would be able to find out there um, the speakers coming up next, um, as uh, as well as that. And and again during breaks, we encourage you to explore the OSCC Expo regions, uh, especially things like there are newer um, things to explore. And I I know later on that um, Art Blue will be talking about Meta, um, but make sure to look to check out also the planetarium and meta regions and the surreal art gallery too during the larger breaks so with that thank you again sheila and val and um i will uh wrap things up